it's such a joy sometimes to go back and see Nintendo's history, to see why their brand has been established as the video game company since they started developing for home consoles. It's just incredible to see that their brand has been established this long and they're still going strong. For example, the NES is known for bringing in the home console revolution in a time when arcade machines thrive. The Super Nintendo is just known for being one of the greatest video game consoles of all time. The Virtual Boy is known for not being good. The N64 is known for bringing in revolutionary graphics that were mind-blowing for the time, with blockbuster releases like Banjo-Kazooie and Mario 64. But it's the first game I really want to talk about, because the company that made that game practically made the N64. They had such a good hot streak going this time. Of course, I'm talking about Rareware, the company practically responsible for some people's childhood with games like Banjo-Kazooie and Jet Force Gemini. They have made some newer titles like Sea of Thieves, but it was really the PS1 N64 era when Rare was really kicking it big. This was the time when Rare was considered one of the big dogs in gaming, along with Nintendo, Konami, Naughty Dog, and a lot of other blockbuster studios in the 90s. And as much as I joke about Rare making the N64, their games combined with Nintendo's is what helps set the N64 apart from the PlayStation. But before I talk about that, we have to go all the way back to prehistoric times. The year was 1991. The Chicago Bulls defeated the Los Angeles Lakers in the NBA Finals. The Hubble Telescope launched. Terminator 2 was released. And Rare released their first real success in the gaming industry with Battletoads for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Battletoads was a beat em up platformer known for its intense difficulty, making gamers all over the world want to ingest their controllers rather than try the speedabyte section one more time. I myself actually like to feel accomplished and finish games, which is why I never played Battletoads, but apparently other people liked it because they did make four more of them. And with Battletoads, the world was introduced to Rareware. More importantly though, Nintendo was introduced to what Rare could do. Because just a few years later, Nintendo and Rare were set to develop a new Donkey Kong game for the Super Nintendo, titled Donkey Kong Country. Development of the game began after Rare founders ran experiments using a silicon graphics workstation in order to render 3D sprites. Nintendo became interested in what Rare was doing, and they acquired half of the company. This led to the development of a new Super Nintendo game with Nintendo and Rare. Rare pitched the idea to create a new, standalone Donkey Kong game. Nintendo accepted, and Rare gathered 12 team members to focus on the game. After an incredible marketing campaign, the game was released to critical and commercial acclaim, becoming the third best-selling Super Nintendo game of all time. The game's massive success spawned two sequels, which both had its fair share of success as well, although never reaching the same level as Donkey Kong Country. These games showed what Rareware was capable of, delivering platforming perfection with revolutionary graphics for the time. Rareware had risen the bar for video games as a whole, and had surely reached their potential. But then, the N64 released, and, you know, you could say Rare was okay during this generation. They had a few good games, but it didn't really matter. GoldenEye 007, 4 player multiplayer, a stupid fun campaign, what else is there to say? 4 out of 5. Diddy Kong Racing releases, and let me just tell you something. Releasing a kart racer on the same platform as Mario Kart is practically a death sentence to your game. But the thing is, Diddy Kong Racing is worth your time, because it's got a hub world to explore with levels and little challenges. 4 out of 5. I mean, yeah, those are both pretty good games, but don't you think that- Banjo-Kazooie releases and reaches a new level of quality that platformers have strived for since. This game is practically perfect and has truly stood the test of time since release. 5 out of 5. Holy! Jet Force Gemini? Now that is a game that definitely released. 3 out of 5. Donkey Kong 64 introduced the idea that good studios can indeed make bad games. But... This game does include the DK rap. 5 out of 5, Masterpiece. Hey, post-production me here. I would play you some of this song, but I do not own it. Perfect Dark, another first-person shooter, takes Goldeneye and somehow makes it better. This game is fantastic and just tons of fun. 4.5 out of 5. And then, we get to Rare's Golden Child. 
Mickey Speedway Racing is truly a masterfully crafted sensation of a game. In fact, this is the highest rated game on Metacritic with an astounding 100 out of 100. This isn't just a must play, this is a triumph for video games and for fans alike. Truly, this is what video games represent. 7 out of 5. Banjo-Tooie is the long-awaited sequel to Banjo-Kazooie, and people do not like this game as much as Banjo-Kazooie. But do people even like this game at all? 3 out of 5. Then Rare releases their most unique game yet. Conquer's Bad Fur Day, a spit in the face to all cutesy 3D platformers. If you don't know what I'm talking about, imagine a game where you play as a greedy, heavy drinking guy who swears all the time, but with the same cute art style as Banjo-Kazooie. This game didn't sell too well, mostly because it came out at the end of the N64's lifespan, but it was bound to become a cult classic. And that is all the rare games released on the N64. Some of the games I talked about did get ported to Nintendo's handhelds, Fun fact, they aren't good. Nintendo might have something to say about this, but in my opinion, the N64 was Rare's console. Not just that, but in general, Rare is responsible for some of Nintendo's greatest and best-selling games of all time. And with the N64 near the end of its life cycle and a new console generation on the horizon, surely Rare would not disappoint. Oh. Yeah, Rare made like one game for the GameCube and then got bought by Microsoft. But I'm sure Microsoft even knows how to use talent properly. I'm sure Rare will still be able to make fantastic new games. In fact, let's see what Rare has made for Microsoft so far. That pretty much signaled the end of Rare's hot streak. It's always extremely sad to see such amazing talent go to waste like that. In fact, the best Rare game in over a decade is a compilation of the best Rare games. But with a new Battletoads in development, and Sea of Thieves finally reaching the potential it promised at launch, maybe Rare is finally turning their bad luck around. Thanks for watching, and in the meantime, don't get bought by Microsoft.